Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about the 10 types of players you see in Golden Trophy, from those level eights who refuse to stand on the mat to the Boathia speedrunner wannabes. So pull up a chair and let's get started. Number one, the low level player. When you play a quest in Rec Room, you're likely to encounter players under level 10. You're hoping for a lobby of level 50s to carry you to an S rank victory, but instead a positive platypus 596 spawns in and they're clearly new to the game. Even if you had names turned off, you could still tell that these players are low level and don't know what to do. The confusion about where to stand once the game starts, the refusal to grab a weapon, and the lack of any strategy becomes very quickly apparent. It's hard to not get frustrated as they are plowed over by a rogue goblin, and you see that they didn't even lift a sword to fight back against it. Your team loses an act too because they didn't know how to revive anyone. You skip lobbies, hoping for a better outcome next time, but you know it's the rec room equivalent of the lottery. The odds just aren't in your favor. Number two, the speedrunner. I personally like to have a leisurely game where I embark on a quest. It's called a quest after all, which is literally defined as a long and arduous search for something. It's not called Golden Trophy Express or High Speed Golden Trophy. So when people are barreling through, slaying all the goblins in the room before you can even smash one pot, it does suck a little bit of fun out of the journey. It's all worthwhile when the speedrunner drives the final arrow into the Goblin King's back and you realize you got S rank. However, the entire experience does feel a little bit cheated at that point, no? The speedrunner opens their box containing film as they own all of the quest outfit and they quietly remark that they could have completed it a minute faster if you hadn't lost your sword in the lava. Number three, the chatty one. Chatty players are great because you don't have to feel bored going through the quest. There's happy commentary, you feel the social aspect of Rec Room. It's quite delightful. But then you get to the mat, all hyped for having just slayed a room full of enemies and you touch the door. No dice. You turn around and the chatty player is standing one inch away from the mat, they take a deep breath and launch into a whole tangent about what they got for their birthday last week. It was supposed to be a Fortnite battle pass, but their mom messed up and got them tickets to the local fort filled with battle history instead. The whole time that the chatty one is rambling, all you can think about is how the quest is now gonna take an hour because between each level, a new story arises. Number four, the one who doesn't understand the boss. One of the most frustrating stereotypes in Golden Trophy are the ones who think that the most efficient way to kill the Goblin King is by swatting at him with a sword or two while simultaneously fending off dozens of mini goblin spawns. Hearing the hollow sound of the swords clattering against the torso of the boss as he merely laughs and drives his ax down into their backs is cringeworthy. Actually, I usually forget that this stereotype even exists because my friends have an extremely fast system of double shielding while one stands above and shoots him directly in the back with a bow. Quick painless, and I don't have to lift a finger to help, so it's perfect. Number five, the bossy player. We all know a bossy player stereotype. You start the game and they are barking about which weapon you should take. You wanna go left at the fork and they quickly reprimand you. No. Don't go that way. You can avoid spawns if you stick to the right. Suddenly, Golden Trophy seems a bit less fun at the hands of the bossy player. God forbid you lose the game because the overconfidence will start bubbling over and you'll hear about all the reasons why your team lost, none of which, conveniently, are ever their fault. Number six, the compulsive pot smasher. I might be this stereotype. I'm not apologetic about it either. Maybe it's some sort of residual OCD that translates into the VR experience. I just can't stand knowing that there's a pot out there in Golden Trophy left unsmashed. They're satisfying to destroy, and if you're with other level 50 players, everyone else is busy stealing the kills anyway, so it's a good way to make yourself feel useful. Number seven, the weapon hog. We all know someone who runs into the start of the game, takes two swords and puts a bow on their back, leaving precious little for anyone else to grab and defend themselves with. I'm pretty sure these are also the same people who don't ask if anyone else wants to split the last piece of pie in real life, or they buy themselves a gift instead when shopping for a friend. The weapon hog might be an only child. Either way, if you're this stereotype, please repeat after me. Sharing is caring. Number eight, the impatient one who runs ahead. This one is almost like a speedrunner, except they're garbage at the game. They run ahead, swords blazing, and issue an ear-piercing war cry before being taken down by two goblins in an instant. They quickly become a burden to the rest of the team with their irresponsible and reckless gameplay style. You would think the impatient player would learn that this lack of planning results in like a 23% success rate in survival, but nope, every time is the same. Number nine, the live streamer. I am guilty of being the live streamer. You'll know you've got a live streamer in the lobby because it sounds like they're talking to themselves as they read chat. They're holding weapons and moving them around, but no actual goblins are dying. You can tell that 90% of the attention is on their live stream, not actually participating and helping the team win. I'm ashamed to admit it, but the live streamer is one of the worst teammates you can have, possibly worse than the level eight who can't pick up a sword. Number 10, the solo player. The solo player doesn't care about the team. They skipped the elementary school lesson that reiterated there is no I in team. They want to run around by themselves 
themselves, not revive when everyone else is down, and they might even keep their mic muted on purpose. Socializing is the very last thing on their independent mind. They merely want to farm wins and not speak to anyone in the process. That's all the stereotypes I have for today, guys. If you'd like to hear about more, let me know in the comments below and I can make a part two. For more Rec Room content, smash that subscribe button. I upload twice a week, Wednesdays and Fridays. We'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.